Hello and welcome to Critical Strike, episode 43. I'm Josh McNell, and here with me is my little sleeper, Kyle Dumont. Okay, I'm super sorry I overslept. Good morning, sir. Actually, good morning is appropriate considering it's 12.06 now. 12.05, but yeah. No, this is 12.06 on mine. Ah, oh, goddamn! It does say 12.06. Oh! Ah, fail already. Yep. Well, it doesn't beat mine of oversleeping by five hours. Yeah, that... Earlier, to, to let the, the folks at home know, <laughs> or at work, wherever you're listening to this, I uh, sent Kyle a message earlier saying, hey, I gotta postpone it till 8, I got something going on. And Kyle's like, that's pretty cool, good, because then I can uh, get some sleep, because I'm tired. I, uh, I spent all night playing Beatles Rock Band and drinking, and then I had to go to work two hours after I fell asleep. And, uh, so yeah. I, didn't, I didn't really get that much sleep last night. And with that, around 8 o'clock, I was like, okay ready to go, we a couple minutes with Kyle, and uh, Kyle didn't show up. <laughs> and as I was talking to a couple friends of ours, and I was like, I'm supposed to be recording right now, but Kyle's not here. And then I ordered a pizza. <laughs> <laughs> and then I ate some of my pizza and uh, played some uh, Ghouls and Ghosts for a little while. And then I played a League of Legends game, and then at 11 I was like, you know what, I'm going to call Kyle and make sure he didn't die. That's that's generally a good thing to do with me, since I do get hurt a lot. Right. And then at 11, I call Kyle, and he answers and goes, What? <laughs> um, who, who is it? Wh- what do you want? And I was like, Did I just wake you up? And it's 11 o'clock. Get your ass out of bed. I didn't say that. No, it's not. Oh. Oh, it is. Oh, shit. Nancy's calling me. I have to call you right back. Right. But I didn't say get your ass out of bed. No. I you said asked you if I was to okay. Do this and you, or do you want to go back to bed? Going back to bed was tempting. You have no idea. I mean, I was already there, in bed, comfortable. Talking to me. Talking to you. It, it was like a dream come true, Josh. That's right. It's kind of creepy at the same time. I could have just had you lull me to sleep. Lull you to sleep with yep. lol cats. Man, uh, I look forward to those every day. What, my Every day, cats? Josh sends me a lol cat. And every day, I send that's like what I wait for at work. Cats. I know. And it's glorious. Oh, man. Have you seen Animals with Lightsabers? I have not. I will send you that link. Okay. There are a lot of stupid pictures on there, but the good ones make it all worthwhile. <laughs> so it's like a cat with a lightsaber? Yes. So basically you're saying the name is true. It doesn't false advertise. Correct. Unlike your other podcasts. Yeah. <laughs> I had to get that dig in there. I'm sorry. Whatever. We we, we did a, a mini podcast uh, Friday or Thursday. Thursday or Friday we did a mini one. So uh, hopefully that should be out soon. All right. And uh, I don't know. You, you seem a little bit groggy, but I'm going to ask you, what have you been up to lately? <laughs> uh, Let's see. Been playing the World of Warcraft. Almost forgot what I was playing. Kind of had to stretch it out there, but yeah, playing World of Warcraft. Started up my own guild with uh, some friends of mine, the Awesome Brigade. Oh, you may have no. heard of it. Yep. Uh, so, Josh, would you like to make a character on Isera and become part of the Awesome Brigade? No. Well, why not? Because I don't like that name. That name is awesome. You can't deny it. I mean, awesome uh, is in the name. You know, that is true, but I don't like the brigade part. Why not? Maybe if it was, like, the Awesome Squad? Yeah, Awesome Squad was number two. Or maybe the Monster Squad? Uh, I think Monster Squad was already taken. Alright, so, yeah. <laughs> Enough of uh, the Awesome Brigade there. But and, I like talking about it. Well, you know, I don't <laughs> think our listeners want to hear about your Awesome Brigade. Alright, people who play WoW, go on Isera, join the Awesome Brigade. And that will not be the official Critical Strike Guild. 
What? Yes, it is. No, you it have is yet not. to make a guild, man. It I made not... the first one. It doesn't matter. You hold no trademark over Critical Strike. Oh, fuck. But I do hold the creative, uh, the creative license to it. No, you don't. No. No. I just only do creative things when you go, Kyle, do something for the podcast. And I go, right. Oh, okay. Right, yeah. <laughs> All right. No, if you want to make that the official Critical Strike guild, go ahead. I don't know, because you're going to yell at me because you don't like the name. No, Actually, I Actually, you won't. already did yell at me because you didn't like the name. I didn't yell at you. Yes, you did. I, you raised no. your voice. Kyle. I felt, the, I felt the heat in your words. Kyle. What? That name fucking sucks. Whimper. But, uh, yeah, I've been playing the WoWs. Been leveling some board characters. So what are you playing now? Uh, let's see, I got my 75 Shaman Utters, and I've got my 28 Warrior, both is that, torn. Is that the me. same uh, realm that has the Dave and Joel guild on it? Yes, it is. Okay. In fact, Utters is a member of it. The Dave and Joel guild. Cough. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. No, it's just, they're, it's a guild, and there are people in it, and they talk. They do. Most guilds do. I know. I, I know. But uh, pretty much it about WoW. I've been playing it a lot, much to my dismay. No, it's good, though. I mean, you you maybe finally get to experience Northrend and all that other stuff. Yeah, I mean, at this rate, I, I might actually be getting okay gear so I could actually go on raids, which might be, you know, an interesting experience. In Northrend? I don't know, wherever the fuck I have to go. Well, in Northwind, the only real raids that they have right now are, um, Naxxramas. And Old Duar. Wuladar. Wuladar? Wuladar. Oh. And, uh, the Crusader or something. Yeah, that's the new one, right? Yeah, I can see you actually doing better in the Crusader one than Uladar. Probably. Uh, Uladar is kind of a bitch. Like, you have to be perfect with everything your guild does. But it's a yeah. really cool, like, look up videos on YouTube of the yogg Saran fight. It's a really awesome fight. Yeah, the, uh, the guys who did it, uh, the Fast Karate Guild actually just beat him not too long ago. And with it, that, I think that was the last, like, boss that they had to, to beat for the released content. Hmm. They, so they went all the way through the champion one already? Uh, I think so. Or the Crusader one? Probably. I don't know. I have to, you know, go ask. All right. So, World of Warcraft. Okay. Think we could put that one to bed? Good. I've, I've been playing it. It's it's fun. I play it with people. You do, because it's massively multiplayer. Yes, it is. Let's see. Other games that I've been... Oh! The fucking other games I've been playing. Uh, Dissidia sucks. What? It is the gayest game I have ever played. Like Really? Super gay. Okay, I gotta I gotta stop right there. Why? Because our friend Dave, Dave the Cripple. Dave the Cripple. He's been loving it. And... It is such like a masturbating game for the for Square Enix. Alright, and Mick, you know, from the Fanboys Launch Cast, uh-huh. he also loves it. Well, those two apparently love it in the ass because that is a gay, gay game. Those are fighting words. Yes, they are. And I, I'm prepared to back that up. I bet you're prepared to back up. I bet, yeah. Oh. Oh. <sighs> Shit. But, um, seriously, like, it starts off and there's, like, this fucking two hour intro. And all it is is all the bad guys are attacking all the good guys, and there's some sort of dark evil god attacking the light goddess, and the the evil god won, and now all the good guys are kind of sad, and they're all voiced really gay. And some of the character choices are retarded. The Onion Knight? The Onion Knight is not iconic. Huh. The... It it doesn't even give you... Okay. Pretty much every Final Fantasy 1 through 10 is represented in the game. Final Fantasy 1, there's not really a main character. You pick a class, whatever. They don't give you, 
like a cl- there's no class guy. He's just generic light warrior one, and all th- all the characters are really really effeminate. All of them, oh god, they they're po- <laughs> they just sound so gay when they talk because the voice acting's bad. They're all super super pretty. Yeah. No. <laughs> it's it's a Japanese game, Kyle. No, but have you have you like tried it out or anything? No, I ha- I haven't picked it up yet. I, I was think... actually waiting to hear what you said about it before I did. Okay. As- uh, looks and gay voice acting and terrible story aside, I mean, it's a fighting game. It was there was guaranteed a terrible story. Well, I heard it looks really good. It oh, it looks fantastic. Yeah. It looks fantastically gay, but it looks fantastic. <laughs> well, I'm just I heard it like graphically they, again like Crisis Core, they did a wonderful job on the PSP. Yeah. And and I heard the music was really good as well. Uh yeah, they they did redo some uh some things. Does who who from uh, Final Fantasy 6 does it have? It's uh probably chick. Kefka. It's a chicken Kefka. Uh so probably Terra. Terra. She's a yeah. summoner. Well, in a way, yeah. No, nah, it's just what she's shown to do. She casts spells and she summons stuff. All right, yeah. She's a mage, yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of interesting... There's all, like, the main headliners. But uh, the thing that bothers me the most... I started off with Final Fantasy VII just because, you know, it's Cloud. And I wanted to mess shit up with the gigantic-ass sword. Was Cloud always really super depressed... Um, kind of, I don't, yeah. I but he don't was more... know what to believe because I don't know what I'm fighting for because I want to believe in what I'm fighting for. <laughs> he he was like that, I would say, like, after Sephiroth told him that he wasn't really who he was. Like, remember when, like, he was lost for that period of time and kind of went insane? But before that, he really wasn't. He was more confused than anything. So here, let me ask you a question, Kyle. Okay. Um, you didn't, so you didn't do what everybody else basically did with this game as soon as they got it. Like, they set up a fight between, like, Squall and Titus, and just beat the shit out of Titus for an hour? No, I actually went straight to the story mode. Ugh. That seems like what everybody else did, is they just beat up on Titus for an hour. Oh, God, and it was so, it's, the way they do it is stupid. There's, like, a board game that you have to play. And uh, you get these things called destiny points, which are pretty much turns. So you move with destiny points, and then you fight guys, and sometimes you can get more destiny points if you meet beat, meet or beat certain requirements in each fight, and they don't really do anything. Hmm. And every once in a while, uh, Chocobo will give you bonus experience for some reason. <laughs> And there's some sort of mechanic where if you beat the shit out of a guy long enough with certain characters, they drop items. Very nice, yeah. <laughs> no, not like, seriously. It will give you a list of items that a character can generate given a fight with a certain enemy. Like, huh. it'll be a 0.1% chance at, on each strike. That's kind of neat. It is kind of neat, but it's kind of strange because... I don't know, I just started out, so all the possible equipment I get is really shitty. So I beat the crap out of some guy, and it's like, oh, you he dropped something that adds plus one to your HP. Hmm. Awesome. And then, uh, you probably heard this already, but there's pretty much two health bars. There's your brave meter, which is your rape meter. Your so rape meter? The high, yep, your rape meter. The higher it is, the better you are at raping your opponent. The lower it is, the chances that you will get raped increases. So is, you pretty... Hmm? What is it with you tonight and gay and rape? I don't know. It's just in the mindset. You're, you're an angry young man. Yes, I am. But you know what? Fuck it. I don't care. So, Dissidia, what you do to win is you beat the shit out of the... What's the, the rightmost button? Square? Uh, or is that yes. circle? No, it's circle. Circle. You you mash the shit out of the circle button. You hit triangle sometimes to dash up to the guy if you hit him too far, and then you hit square once, and that's how you win. Hmm. 
there is no skill involved in that game. Huh. Yeah, I don't know. Like, the way everybody else was talking about it made me really want it. But the way that you're talking about it makes me uh, really want to avoid it. Yeah, you should definitely do that. I mean, is, give it a shot. If you like it, go for it. You know what, there, Josh? Uh, Try it out. It might be for you. You like fighting games. It might not. Well, I like fighting games with depth. There's not really that much depth. Right. That's that's the problem with it. I mean, uh, you, you unlock moves by spending points that you win throughout the game, but it doesn't matter because all you're doing is hitting circle and then square. Right. Yeah. Uh, is there anybody from like Final Fantasy Tactics in it? Nope. All just normal Final Fantasy. It's oh, really? generic light warrior, uh the main guy from Final Fantasy two, the Onion Knight, uh fuck, I forgot that guy's name from Final Fantasy Four. The uh the not the Dragoon, but the oh, Black Knight turned paladin. Yeah, I don't even remember. Yeah, he's in it. I don't know who the hell that guy's is from Final Fantasy Five. Uh it's got you said her name was Terra? Yeah, Terra and Kefka. Terra and Six, Cloud and Seven, and then you know everyone else. Yeah, right, right yeah. I don't know, it doesn't sound uh, too real, too appealing. Especially when you break up the words like gay and rape. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> so I don't know, I think uh, Dissidia might just end up having to be a pass at this point. Yeah, I, but you know what, I don't want to like be too much of a downer. Try it out. You You might honestly like it. I mean, Mick liked it, Dave the Cripple liked it. Uh, you know, Dave will like anything if it takes him away from WoW for like five minutes. Aww. <laughs> All right, so there's uh, Dissidia. Okay, another game that I picked up, I'm, this, is, this might surprise you, but uh, I've d- managed to dust off both of my handhelds for this po- no. Uh, episode. No way. I did. How much? Uh, uh, how many layers of dust were there on your DS? Well, from what I can gather, it appears that some sort of form of life spontaneously generated and then died as I could, as I peeled off these layers of dust like some sort of fossil record. Wow! Uh, wow! <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, because I dusted off my DS too. I mean, the last time I used it was um, for Retro Game Challenge. And I dusted it off because I, I'm going to be playing when, as soon as I pick it up. Uh, Scribble nuts. Eh, I, that game. I mean, it's, it's it looks really cool and it's, it's got a lot of neat mechanics. But all you're just going to be doing is writing out words. Yeah, I'm going to be just... writing out awesome words like gay and rape. Oh man, I wonder what happens if you do put that in there. See, right, now you need I, to now get I have it to, to find get scribble out. so I can abuse it. Right? <laughs> All right. But uh, all I can think about is that little scribble knot guy raping like a tree. Or Jesus. <laughs> he rapes the tree in half so he can cross a canyon. Right. There you go. See, I, <laughs> I got you interested in that game. Okay. Thank you, Josh. But uh, let's see. The game that I picked up was Professor Layton and the Diabolical Box. Oh no. It's Professor Layton. With a Diabolical Box. With a Diabolical Box. So I guess he has Vagina Dentata? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, it means that there's teeth in the vagina. I'm shocked you picked this up. You know what? Honestly, I am too. Considering how much I hated the previous Professor Layton game. You can't that, even you know say what? that you hated it. You loathed that game. You despised that game. It's because, I don't know, I guess I have to be in the mood for a puzzle game. And at the time, I just wasn't. So I just kind of forced myself to like like to play it. But, uh, I don't know, there's something about the Diabolical Box. It's, I think, better than the first one. I heard it was worse. I think it's because you're not in the same area just going back and forth just over and over again in that town. Right. Like yeah, I haven't I, picked it up, so I have no reference with it at all. Yeah, like the first game, you're, you're just in this town, and that's all you do is you hang out in this town. 
Yeah, I remember that. I played the first one. Yeah. The second one, you actually change areas. Like, the I'm four or five hours into it. The first the first area you're uh you go to some guy's apartment and it turns out he's dead because this is what that box does. If you solve it it kills you. So uh Professor Layton's taking this ten year old boy to a murder scene and then uh <laughs> and then they decide to go for a train ride, so you're hanging out on the train and then the train breaks down so you hang out in this town, and that's where I am now. Hanging this, out in this, this town. This like thirty-five something year old man decides to take a ten year old boy on a train ride. This is. I'm trying to figure out why Professor Layton has a ten year old assistant. I, you know I, what? L- Luke is probably a little older, but they do hint that Luke is a young boy. Was Luke in the first one too? I remember yep. a little kid. Luke was in the first one. Right. Okay. And. What they managed to hook me and why I'm going to continue playing is they say they hint that they will tell you why the professor has taken Luke under his wing. And I want to know. Pedophile. He probably is a pedophile. Especially when he picked up the, uh, the younger girl on the train. And so now it's Professor Layton, 10-year-old boy, 15, 16-year-old girl. In a diabolical box. In a diabolical box. Huh. It uh, doesn't look too good. Nobody can tear a game down like we can. Nope. Chris <laughs> Hansen's probably going to be uh, asking Professor Layton to sit over there. It's an internet wow. reference. Yeah, I don't... Yeah. <laughs> uh, Pedo Bear. Oh, I yeah. still find you funny. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. It's, yeah. Uh, anyway, the reason why I was so tired today was because I was playing Beatles Rock Band last night. Ooh. I don't know if you've played it. I did. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about Beatles Rock Band, Kyle. It is visually stunning. That is like, like, did you go all the way through the story mode? Uh, I actually came in at the very end of the story mode, but the people I played with beat the game that night. Okay, yeah. Like, I started, uh, I actually went into, like, the, the random play, and then, like, before I went into the the, the story mode. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, I agree with you. That game is, is amazing looking. It's, like, the detail on the characters. I, uh, I the, know. The first song I played was I Am a Walrus, because it's... I am a walrus. I mean, why wouldn't you want to play that? And uh, I am the walrus. Yeah. All right, Donnie. But um, <laughs> <laughs> shut the they... fuck up, Donnie. <laughs> you have no frame of reference. You're but... like a child who wanders in the middle of a movie. No frame of reference. <laughs> like instead of, it actually used like the music video. They recreated the music video. That the did Beatles they? did for I Am the Walrus. Yeah. Like, I don't know if you've ever seen that music video. I have not. I can only imagine how trippy and psychedelic it is. It is very trippy and psychedelic. <laughs> and they actually recreated it in the game, like, perfectly. It looks really, really good. I'm, I'm stunned. Like, now, are, uh, you a f- are you a fan of the Beatles music? Uh, apparently not, because I didn't know, like, half of the songs they chose for it. All right, well, like, our friend... I, 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 I do... Like, I don't own any of the Beatles stuff, but I, I know their songs, and I listen to them, and I don't hate them, so I guess I like them. All right. Well, you appreciate them. Yes, I appreciate them. Our, our friend Paul. Paul. Text messaged me the night that it came out. Okay. And he was like, I don't know why they're making a Beatles rock band. Like, he doesn't understand why people would want to play Beatles songs. Oh. Paul tried, played his little heart out last night. I tr- well, he, he I tried describing it to him because people love the Beatles. Yes, like, they do. Their songs are short, yeah, and they don't really fit in today's musical style, but people fucking love the Beatles. I was like, you know why they made a Beatles rock band? He's like, why? Because it's the fucking Beatles. I don't know. Some of those songs are really long, though. Some of them are. Some of them aren't. But it's kind of funny because... I don't know, Nancy said that, told her mom that she was going to go, you know, 
play the Beatles rock band, and her mom knew all the details about the game. So it's just kind of funny that <laughs> it's this game has so much, uh, I guess, normal news coverage that uh, kind of everybody knows about it. Oh, uh, yeah. My old man uh, said, hey, have you heard about that Beatles rock band to me? Oh, wow. See, so, uh, are you going to get it? I already have it. I played it uh, yesterday because oh. now it's 1238. <laughs> I thought uh, I thought you knew someone who got it, but you gonna play with them? Uh, what do you mean play with them? Your, with who? Your old man? Oh no, no, he has no interest in playing it. He's not. No. He's more of a Rolling Stones fan than a Beatles fan. Oh. Ah. Like gonna... I was raised on the Beatles, though. Like there's, there's, a, I would say three bands that in my childhood I was raised on by my mom. Um, the Beatles, uh, the Moody Blues. Yep. And Tom Petty. Tom Petty's an interesting choice. Those are probably like my three key bands that I was raised on by my mom. Like if they if they made a Beatles or I mean a Boston rock band, then that would be like my dad's side. A Boston rock band? He loves Boston. Uh, Nancy's in. <laughs> but no, I I got to say I'm I'm amazed with Beatles rock band. It it's really good. Yeah, it definitely was a good time. Uh, it's kind of weird how there's no solos, but it, you know, it fits. What do you mean there's no solos? No, I mean, you don't, with a normal rock band, you don't do the, uh, you know, you go crazy and then you hit the the snare. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you there are solos, it. but, like, I know what you mean. Not, yeah. like, the random point-generating mom- moments. Yep. None of yeah. those. What are you fiddling with? Oh, it. Things are being fiddled with during in the apartment. Oh. But uh, one of the things that I really liked was just when you select the, the character, you can immediately decide if you're a lefty or a righty by hitting back. Yeah. That was really useful because Paul's left-handed. Is he? Yep. Hmm. So we, you didn't have to hit pause and then you had to go through the menu to do it. You just hit back right yeah. at the start. There was definitely a lot of thought put into this game. Yeah, I, I really there was definitely some improvements. I like so, it. Uh, I, I wish there was. I wish they had like all the albums in it right away, rather than like delaying them with downloadable content, though. Yeah, but you really want to milk that Beatles cow just a little more. Yeah, definitely. Especially since it's the Beatles, you will make money. Oh yeah, I'm. I'm sure this game is going to be like one of the top sellers. And what we don't care, the MPD numbers. Yep. No, it's, uh, it's, I loved it. Like, I played it for probably, like, two hours this morning. Wow. You were up in the morning? I, well, one. (laughs) In the afternoon. (laughs) Uh, Well, I was up in the morning by, like, six when I went to bed, I should say. (laughs) And then I got up at one, then I played Beatles, yeah. (laughs) So, in a sense, I was up in the morning. Yeah. You were awake, and it was it was you know in the in the early morning, just why why you gotta it make was, it look like I sleep a lot? I don't know. Did you sleep a lot? Well, you you're making it seem like I, I never I'm never up at a it's, normal it's time. It's quite the opposite. You it seems like you never sleep. In yeah. fact, as I recall, Nancy was banking on it when she drunk dialed you at like three in the morning. Oh God, yeah, I was in the. I was playing uh, League of Legends with a friend of mine, Eric, and all he can hear is, like, Nancy calling me five times in a row. Yeah. All you had to deal was with the phone call. I had to make sure she got from point A to point B, and it was a mile and a half walk between those two. Uh, well, basically, like, what I did with you that night that you came up with your, your Oh, my God, it's tag. a kitty. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so let's get back on topic here. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Beatles Rock Band, two thumbs up, big fan. Yeah, big fan. I think if you like the Beatles, or even like if you just appreciate the Beatles, I think that you would love it because, like the story mode, like we said earlier, you you progress through their career from like the time that they were starting in Liverpool, from when they were touring, when they were done touring, and then like after that, it picks up with music videos or just like jam stuff. It, it's really impressive. Have you uh tried the Yoko Ono mode? There's a Yoko Ono mode? Yeah, it breaks up the band. Oh, does it really? No, 
I was just going to say that's what you use when you want everybody to leave. Oh, I, I was I was like, is it going to be downloadable content? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just going to be the guitarist <laughs> and the vocalist saying the same things over and over again. Yoko Ono mode is like a $5 DLC and it erases your game save. Oh. Oof. Ah, oh, that would be mean. That would be mean. <laughs> I think that's about it for me. So what have you been up to, sir? Well, Kyle, I will tell you. Uh, like I said, um, when we were rambling during Beatles Rock Band, uh, I uh -huh. was playing League of Legends. Oh, shit, I got the beta of that. Uh, I actually got into the beta. I just actually have to play it. Well, last episode we did, I actually talked about it a little bit, but kind of really briefly because it was under NDA. Okay. And, and now uh, it's not? Yeah, a day after I released the episode, they, they got rid of the NDA. <laughs> So, I can talk about it all the way now. Ooh. And, uh... <laughs> Hit a home run, Josh. Let's go all the way. No. Um... No. There really isn't much to say about it. I mean, if you know what Defense of the Ancients, or a.k.a. Dota, Dota. is... Dota. Dota. Then this is... Then this is it. Uh, it's just not branded with Blizzard property. Right. I mean, the only difference is, like... In Defense of the Ancients, there were small differences that aren't in this, where, like, there was a thing called denying, where your enemy creeps, uh, or you would be attacking your enemy's creeps to progress your line, because in, in Dota, there's three paths, three pathways. Yep. Leading all the way to your other, the enemy's base. And down those pathways, enemy creeps, aka little monsters, come down and try to stop you and attack your base. So, you would be working your way down a lane, and while you're killing the creeps, an, an enemy could come up and kill their own creep to stop you from, from killing it and get gold and, and experience from it. That's called denying. Uh, I didn't you can't know you do could that. do that. Huh? I didn't know you could do that in Dota. Yeah, you could. You can't do it in League of Legends, though. Huh. So that takes a little bit of strategy out of it. Um, I mean, in a way, this is Dota. It's just simplified Dota. It's just a little bit easier. Um, the heroes are, are more creative, whereas, like, Heroes of New Earth, all the, the heroes that you can pick from are from Dota. Like, they're identical to what you would find in the Warcraft 3 Dota. I see. So, I mean, it's nice that they progressed it a little bit and like I said last time, it, it's it's Dota, but it's Dota Evolved. Um, rather than having that one map that you could with Defense of the Ancients, now there's going to be like seven, I think. Ooh, that's nifty. Yeah, so it's going to be nice to have some different levels to play on, whereas like every time I've played Defense of the Ancients, it was always on that same the Forest. Map. Yeah, every fucking time I've played it, it was always on that forest. Uh, another big change is like... You know how in Dota you you can build like super weapons and super items by uh, combining them with lower ones that you would buy. Yeah. This one here, like in Dota, you had to go from one shop to another shop to another shop. There was like ten shops in in the main st starting area, and then somewhere in the map there was a, a hidden shop, a secret one. Yeah. Uh, this one here, it's all in one area. Uh, so it you takes kind of the fun out of it. No, it doesn't, actually. It's a lot better. You don't have to go all over the fucking place to build one item. But that was kind of the challenge. You either had to decide to get better equipment or, you know, progress your line. There's other ways that they make up for that. You know, it's just, I like that it's all in one spot. I don't need to go all over the fucking map to try to build one item. I mean, it's kind of, that's all preference, really. Yeah, I guess I, it is. One thing I do like, though, is like if, if there's a hero that you're not familiar with, uh, when you go into the shop, it gives you a list of recommended items. 
and you can buy oh, them really? right off right off of that list. That's useful. Yeah, it gives you a nice little jump start with that hero rather than uh trying to figure it out on your own. So I mean, yeah, it, it's a cool game. I like it. Uh, I think it's going to be coming out soon because uh they just released a patch and uh they're starting to incorporate stuff like the way that they're going to support this game is I guess it's going to be free. Uh-huh. But they're going to have it where it has downloadable content where like you can download extra heroes or more heroes if you so choose to. Mm. But you're going to have I think like right now there's maybe like 30 heroes that you can play for free. Jesus Christ. And on top of that I guess there's going to be like 20 more that you can download if you so choose to. Well, that's good. That yeah, I think that's a nice way to support the game. I I kind of wish that they would charge for the game. I mean that way you know, they're getting money for it. They deserve it, but that's a, a nice way to support it at least is uh, you know, through downloadable content. That you don't have to have. I mean, there's plenty yeah. of heroes th- that you can play if you choose not to buy them. But I'm going to buy them anyways. Yeah, I mean, you could spend more money on new maps too. Th- that's no, uh, it's pretty. It's set up well, but it li- it relies too much on probably stingy gamers. You know what though? Uh, people who play Defense of the Ancients are really into that t- type of fucking game, and I guarantee you, it's going to be pretty well supported. And on top of that, I guess the, yeah, Riot Games is the company who made it, and they just got $8 million invested to them from uh, some firm in China. Wow. Heh, <laughs> I thought it would have been Korea. Yeah, me too, actually. But, uh, no, that's League of Legends. I, I really like it. Uh, I've been playing a shitload of it as of late. Basically, like, as soon as I get home from work, I get text messages saying, lol. And I was like, all right. Heh, <laughs> <laughs> so, lol. Yeah, lol. <laughs> So yeah, that's uh, League of Legends, and after that, I, I played Trine. Okay, you, how, how do you how do you like it? Well, uh, I don't know if you remember it. I sent you a video about it uh, last yeah. time we talked about it. The uh, you play the three different classes, but they're the same person. Right. Yeah, you have the mage, the the warrior type cl- guy, and the thief. Mm-hmm. And each one uh, gives you a different way to get through the level. I mean, you're gonna have to switch between all of them as you play. Uh, like, you might want to get a potion or something that's high above, so you can either, either use the mage to make a plank and a couple of boxes to get up there, because he can conjure <laughs> items. Plank. <laughs> yeah, plank. Uh, or you can use the thief with her grappling hook. Okay. And uh, it's a really cool game. Uh, everybody's waiting to buy it on the PlayStation 3. And personally, like, this is the one time I will probably ever agree with Thrill House 17. I don't think it would be very good with console controls. And why think, do you say that? I think this game needs a keyboard and mouse. Uh, just for the fact that, like, when, you, when you're playing, like, the mage specifically, you have to, if you want to conjure a box, you have to draw out a box with your mouse. Oh. And to... To do that with a, an analog stick, I, I think would be a pain in the ass. I, I don't know. They, they're probably going to change it where it's you have preset, I guess, shapes. Well, it's a fucking square for a box, Kyle. It's not that hard. Well, I'm just saying to make it quicker. I guess. Like you'll hit, you'll hold the right bumper, and Y, you know, X, Y, A, B become shapes, and then you just hit the shape, and then you move it, and then you hit. I guess A, and then it'll stick there. I suppose. Um, I like it, though. I like it. I think it's really slick. And uh, like I said, it's beautiful. Uh, my computer played it on all the highest settings and everything. Uh, the background is... They put so much detail into it. The music is gorgeous. I, I think the only complaint that I have with this game... Um, Going through the whole thing, it's fucking really easy. It, it really is easy. I mean, there's some puzzles where you have to figure your way out to get past this one area. And then once you get to that, you have to fight a big skeleton at the end of the level. And then is you go into the next one. a big skeleton? There's, not always, no. But that's another thing, though. If there was one thing that really annoyed me about it, the the there was a really limited amount of enemies in this game. Are there really? It's like always a skeleton or a spider or a bird. Or like, or not a bird, a bat. I was going to say, a bird doesn't seem particularly terrifying. 
they do a Ninja Gaiden. Uh, but uh, no, uh, you know, they they had a lot more opportunities where they could have brought some like more creative bosses or enemies in it. It's kind of a letdown, I guess, if I if I had to pick one. But like I was saying before, my my only real complaint with this game because I don't know the enemies one really isn't, but okay, you, what's your complaint? The levels are all pretty short, and they're all really easy. And then when you get to the very last one, you want to tear your fucking hair out. <laughs> really? Yeah, it starts off as lava uh, at the very bottom of the level, and it rises over time. It's one of those types of things. Ugh. And you have little planks that you have to basically climb all the way up on the top of this fucking building on. While okay. enemies are coming down at you... While the lava's rising up towards you, it's just really hectic. It's it's really hard. And it's it's long too. So like one fuck up and you're going down in the lava. That and, sucks. Uh, as far as I know, Mr. Thrillhouse seventeen has not beaten it yet, but I have. <laughs> just saying, I might be better at life. Yeah, yeah, you are. Are you eating? No. On the podcast? I haven't eaten today. You fucking asshole. I'm sorry. I'm so hungry right now. You do not understand. <laughs> I, well, mute your microphone. I did. All right. <laughs> no. Oh, so good. Cheesesteak. How I love you. Oh, God. I'm drooling all over the place. <laughs> but, uh, no, trying, I would definitely recommend to anybody. Seriously, I, that game was really fun. Meh, I probably won't play it. Well, one, you can't run Steam, and two, you don't have a PlayStation 3. Yep, that's why I said I probably won't play it. Yet. I foresee a PlayStation 3 in your future. What do you mean? Especially now that it's two ninety nine. Yeah, I mean, I, I'll probably break down and buy one. Well, now that you're moving back to Connecticut. Yep. To make money. To make money. But, uh, so uh, another game that I played was, uh, Raiden 4. Are you it's familiar not with Raiden the... 4? Raiden, Raiden, whatever. Are you familiar with that series? Nope. You know how they're shoot 'em ups? Wait, I think I played Raiden 2. Right. Yeah, it's a vertical shoot 'em up. Yeah. And this one here is out on the Xbox 360. Um, okay. It's like $40. Ugh. By all rights, it should have been a downloadable game. I thought it was. No, it wasn't, actually. Um, by all rights, it should have been. It's basically... And actually, they, they, they fucking say it, too. Like, uh, Raiden or Raiden 3 is... Or Raiden 4 is basically Raiden 3. Just with new levels. Like, the ships and enemies that you go up against are all from Raiden 3. They're identical. Okay. So that's kind of a negative thing. Uh, I'm not going to be too negative with it because, you know, I did pay for the game. I, I don't know if I have the right to be negative about a game that I paid it for. Uh, what do you mean? you? you wait, <laughs> did you say you paid for it or you didn't pay? I paid for it, so I shouldn't have the right to be negative about it. I'm just saying. Kyle. That's retarded. I'm just saying. You bought the game. You should be able to bitch about it. You gave them money. You should complain. I'm just saying, Kyle, God, we don't want to be negative, but the one of my complaints with it, I suppose, if I had one, and it really isn't a complaint, because in Raiden, as far as I remember, in all of them, there was really only one ship. Like, in, in other ones, like Gunbird and stuff, you have, like, four ships that yeah, you can choose from, like, and, they all, and they all differ. In yeah. Raiden, as far as I remember, there was always really one, maybe two, and they really weren't that different. And this one is pretty similar. I mean, there's only one ship. But if you do want more, you can download them. For how much? 80 Microsoft points. That's not that bad. That's really not that bad. I could really care less about 80 Microsoft points. Yeah, what is that, a buck? Maybe, yeah. Something like that. Especially, you know, people are buying pom-poms for their avatars. <laughs> for fucking for five, five dollars. Right, so... That's unbelievable. No, shush. That's their money, Kyle. I know, but still, it's retarded. That's, well, their price is retarded, but again, people bought them, so that justifies their, their pricing. 
but 80 Microsoft points to, down to download one ship. There's two ships available that you can download. One of them is basically identical to the first one you have. In fact, it's a ship that's from an earlier game in the Raiden series. They're really, you don't want that one. Okay. Uh, there's a ferry one that you can download. It's basically a ferry. Um, and I don't like that one. <laughs> it's faster. It's a ferry? It's a ferry, yeah. It's a faster ferry. Which is kind of nice that it's faster, but at the same point, it doesn't really differ in any other way except for some of the power-ups that you can get. It shoots bubbles. Bubbles. Yeah, it shoots bubbles. Not Michael Jackson's old monkey, but bubbles. <laughs> and the ship just goes up and shoots a monkey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just picturing the ship now. <laughs> obliterating monkeys. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> but no, it shoots out waves of bubbles at the enemies. And uh, yeah, I didn't like that. <laughs> so I went back to the, the ship that you get with the game. And I mean, you don't really need more ships in these types of games because the way they do it is... Um, like in other shoot 'em ups there's power-ups throughout the level. Okay. And these ones, they shift in colors. Like there's uh, red, purple, and blue. And whatever color you get determines whatever type of weapon you get. And it upgrades from that point on. So, like, you can basically customize your ship within the game. Like, but what, by whatever color pick up, uh, power-up you, you select. So it's like that, uh, what was that two-stick shooter? Uh... Fuck, you shot, like, meteors and stuff for the PS3. Uh, oh, Super Stardust HD. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, it kind of like that, yeah. The only difference is, like, in Super Stardust HD, you can switch between all those different weapons, and this one, you can't. So, like, um, if I pick up the blue one, I use the blue weapon from that point on, unless I un I pick up the red one on the next one. Okay. But, I mean, so that kind of covers my hatred for them not having more ships, because I can customize it based, based on, like, how I want to get the power-ups. That, that's great that you can customize it. Yeah, that's kind of cool, actually. And uh, I would think, I, I would say my favorite feature in this game is the replay system. I can record a game and upload it. So, like, if somebody's going through the leaderboards or their friends list leaderboards, they can click on my game and watch it. This is for the PS3. No, this is on the 360. Uh, what? Oh, yes, that's, that's that's pretty cool. Yeah, so like if you if you have the game, which most likely you won't, <laughs> uh, you can go on your friends list uh, in the leaderboards and uh, click on my name and watch my game that I played and uploaded. Hmm. Which I mean, other games have done it too, Halo, Gran Turismo, blah blah. Yeah. But I always like it when games do this. Yeah. It's fantastic, because then it's like, oh, remember this part? Ha, ha, ha. You suck. Yeah. Yeah. That's... I, I, I like that a lot. So, uh, yeah, that's riding for... I mean, yeah. It's, it's a shoot 'em up and I love shoot 'em up so I had to get it. And apparently most people don't even know it's out yet, because uh, I've had, like, eight people say, hey, how did you get that game early? Really? But in their defense, like, if you go on Amazon and you look up the game... It says mm. it's coming out in October. That's Still. weird. Like, but um, GameStop.com is selling it already, so whatever. I have it. Maybe you lucked out and got it early? Yeah, maybe I did. It's a good game, though. I, I don't know, 40 bucks. You can't really complain. I mean, you can complain. If you and didn't you sort of have. Game. Yeah. I hate you. <laughs> Alright, I'm done. That's all you played? Yeah. League That's... of Legends, Trine, Raiden 4, The Beatles Rock Band. Oh, okay. It didn't seem like that much. Well, I didn't want to go more into The Beatles Rock Band because we already talked about it. Yeah. That, that's kind of like why I goaded you to... so we could talk about it. So okay. I'm moving on, Kyle. All right, let's move on. <laughs>
our challenge. Oh. So, Kyle. Let me ask you a question. Yep. How are you progressing in Mega Man 3? I have to stop playing it because it's it's making me so upset. So I, you haven't... No, no, hold on. Okay. You haven't beaten one Robot Master in Mega I Man 3. I haven't. Really? I have not. I'm, I'm really disappointed by this. It's too goddamn hard. It isn't that hard, Kyle. Yeah, I know there's a pattern, and yes, you know, I can see it, but I still get hit. I still get destroyed. And then I'm in the train going back to Philadelphia, and I'm cursing under my breath, and people are scooting in their seats away from me. And then I have to but, stop playing. But here's my comment to that. What? You were on the train on Monday. Yeah. You've had from Monday till now to play it, and you haven't. And I've been playing it at work, too. So people You're think I've really... been furiously typing when I haven't. Even, w <laughs> Even when I send you... So my lolcats haven't helped you? No, my your lolcats have prevented me from going crazy and ruining my office. That's good. So, I guess... Are you going to forfeit Mega Man 3 again? I have to. Josh, I have to. I'm gonna if if oh. I don't, I'm going to go on a murder spree from here up hmm. to New Hampshire. It's, can we at it's, least? It's not gonna be pretty. Can we at least go to Fun Spot before you try to murder me? I don't know. We'll get, we're, I'm gonna have to play this thing by ear. <laughs> All right. So you're gonna forfeit Mega Man Three again. Yep. And uh, from my point, where you challenged me to Ninja Gate. Yep. On the NES, I completed it. Yes, you did. And, uh, I really fucking hate you for making me play this game. Oh, I hate, I, I hate you for making me play 3 and 9, and then... I... No, wait a minute. Yes, you, you can did. only the... say... No, shush. You can okay. only say I made you play 3 and 9, but the second time I did not make you pick 3. No, I did that just so I could, you know, see if I could redeem myself, and I couldn't. So, yeah. You can't blame that, that one on me, but... Uh, no, I won't blame the second one on you. I blame myself. Right. I actually went so serious with Ninja Gaiden that after we finished the last episode, we called up our friend Thrill House, and uh, we talked for basically nine hours. And uh, while we were all talking, yeah. I was playing Ninja Gaiden. Fuck, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try Ninja Gaiden. Fucking birds! Oh, what the fuck? So you guys were sitting here listening to me pounding on my controller... Yo. And swearing at the same time. Yeah, it was funny. Fuck you. <laughs> uh, I eventually caved that night. I couldn't take it anymore. And uh, I didn't play it for a couple days. And then maybe the day after that, I finally beat it. Yeah, it's when when you said like I'm not like I have to take a break. I'm like, oh man, this is where I'm gonna catch up. And then I didn't. You totally failed. I did fail. So, as it stands right now, Josh 2, Kyle 0. Yeah. I have a feeling that this is going to be nothing but an ego boost for you, this whole contest thing. Alright, so, we actually have a couple of uh, listener recommendations. Are they retro games, or...? They are retro games. Okay. Um, one of them is Blaster Master. Oh, Jesus Christ. All right. What's the other one? What's wrong with Blaster Master? That's another hard one. I don't know if it's really that hard, Kyle. God damn it! You can beat it in two hours. Uh, I think I have to remember right, but I think the other one was Captain Skyhawk. I've never even heard of that one. Well, here's the weird thing: I have never played either. You've never played Blaster Master? I've played it, but never really beat it. Yeah, I've never beaten it. Well, actually, we ha we have more recommendations, too, like Chrono Trigger and Final Fantasy III that somebody posted on the website. So That would be interesting. We can either do Blaster Master, Captain Skyhawk, Final Fantasy III, and Chrono Trigger, or we can pick each other's games again. So I'm going to give you a choice here, Kyle. Uh... Out of those four games, you can pick your own, and then you can pick one for me. See, the, the thing is, there is a definite difference in the time to play between, say, 
Blaster Master and Chrono Trigger. Well, you have four weeks, Kyle. Okay. Because remember, the way that we do it is by the next next yeah, episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we've just. I, I don't want you to pull. I don't want you to pull this. I picked Blaster Master, and I beat it before you, so I win. Bullshit. I don't care. I don't care. It's not, you know, I want to see if we can complete these games. Not really always who beats it first. No, but see, that's what matters to me. You're so competitive. Yes, I am. All right, so you get to either decide the game that we're going to play, or from these four games, you can pick one. Okay, uh, an important question. Final Fantasy three, three yeah. American or three Japanese? Three Japanese, because the person said uh, on the SNES. So that would be Final Fantasy VI. Okay. Wait. All right. Huh. Well, I guess this is a good opportunity for me to... Uh, how long would you say Final Fantasy VI is, Josh? Uh, um, I don't know. I haven't played it as somebody who doesn't know how to play it in a long, long time. It's been about a year since I played it myself. All right. And how long did that take you? Shit, uh, I don't remember now. <laughs> I know it's relatively, it's not like a Final Fantasy VII type long like game. 20 hours? I would say less than that. Alright, I, I could do that then. I'll, I, so I, will gonna, take, I will take Final Fantasy III. You're going to take Final Fantasy III, alright. Yep. What, what am I going to take? Because you get, I'm letting you pick my game this time. No, that that's not fair. You have to, I picked mine and you pick yours. Well, that's what we're going to do. We're going to switch it on and off. One challenge, we we pick our own, and then the challenge after that, we pick each other's. You're changing the rules, Kyle. I'm just adding to them. I'm making it more interesting. Huh. All right. Um... It, it'll be the cool-down period where we can pick something we, we'd like. You know what? Or I'll take something that. new that we're interested in. You know what? Honestly, I have never played through Chrono Trigger. So It's a fun game. I'm going to take Chrono Trigger. All right. Round three, fight. And these are two good RPGs. Yes, they are. And, uh, yeah, actually, you know what? It's funny that you're picking Final Fantasy III because on a forum that I visit, <clears throat> somebody made a thread called Most Game or Best Gaming um, Memories. Or okay. Or something like that. And everybody kept saying the opera scene in Final Fantasy VI. That is like everybody's, one of their favorite scenes in a video game. Their memorable moments. So you oh. get to experience that. Yeah, for the first time. The only thing that I, I know about the opera scene is just from what I heard from the Black Mages. Which it's I have to really say cool I like. It's a really cool scene. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. You're going to take Final Fantasy <laughs> 3. What? No, I'm just remembering in Dissidia. It's like all these huge... Like, muscular, armored guys, or guys with huge swords, or something, and then it's Kefka in a clown costume. Well, yeah. But it's, you know what, though? It's just the one funny. Thing, have... I love I love Kefka. Not I only because Final Fantasy VI is one of my favorite games of all time, but you know what? Kefka, everybody says Sephiroth is an amazing bad guy, Okay. You will never meet a more psychotic motherfucker than Kefka. That's how much of a badass he was. He didn't need a big sword to be evil. He was just a psychotic motherfucker. Well, Sephiroth didn't really need the big sword. He's just like, hey, Cloud, you don't really exist. Blah. Okay, so how about running up and poisoning somebody's entire family and then watching them die? Yeah, that's pretty evil. That's what fucking Kefka does. Well, I, I, I really don't want to get in this argument with you. I would win. And you probably I, would. And so hey, this should, now I get to experience this evil firsthand. This should be good. I'm this, excited this for this good. one. Th this is an actual, genuine contest that I'm interested in. So Who I think I might give you a run games? for your money. Well, all right. If you So do you want to push it for who can beat him first? Uh well, that's the whole point of the, the point system, isn't it? No, I thought it was just to see who can beat these games. Oh, I thought it was a who beats it first. No, but on this one, we'll do who beats it first. Okay. 
Um, so that's it for the challenges. I'm I'm excited. Yeah, me too. All right, moving on. Moving on. Voicemails, Kyle. Voicemails. Hooray. We, we have voicemails. Yes, we do. And how can they leave us a voicemail if they want to? Well, they could just call us up using their telephone of choice. And the number they dial is 1-909-C-STRIKE. Or, if you don't want to do the letter thing, you can do 278-7453. Uh, <laughs> The, the letter thing is so much easier because it's C strike. I suppose. I don't know. I always go by the numbers rather than C strike. Really? Yeah, I don't know why. I always tell everybody go by the numbers. I guess it's quicker to do the numbers, but C strike is more memorable. That's true, yeah. So I'm going to play the first voicemail that we have, uh, which is from our friend Keith. Oh, really? It is from Keith. Keith Harbort, and here we go. Hey, this is Keith. Just checked out the show. Wanted to give you guys a pity voicemail. Yep. A pity voicemail? The show made I me feel so bad too. that I had to call and leave a voicemail. No, really. It wasn't that bad. Except for all the wow stuff. All right, it was kind of bad, but you guys Kyle's got another bad. show out. Congratulations. Later. Later. <laughs> did, did he say pity or titty? I'm going with titty only okay. because I love titties. That was an awesome voicemail, Keith. Your titty voicemail. <laughs> Thank you for the voicemail, the uh, pity voicemail. Because you know, oh. on, on the last episode, you Damn did, it. you did ask for pity voicemails. Kyle. Yes, I did. And uh, you got one. Yes, I did. So uh, looks like plan. Beg for voicemail was a success. Right. Now we're going to step it up and beg for other things. <laughs> Send us money. Um, yes, please. The next voicemail we have started out as uh, from Rich, you know, who left one uh, on the prior episode. Yes, he did. And it it kind of evolved into his whole podcasting crew. And uh, this one is three minutes long, so I'm going to go take a nap. While it's playing? I'd like to, but uh, I don't want to wake up next Tuesday. Alright, so here we go with the three minute long voicemail. Well, hello, this is uh, Rich calling back. Um, the guy who called a couple weeks ago, and I've uh, actually brought my friends with me. Say hi, guys. What's up? You have hi, no friends. Hi, guys. This is Billy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Actually, the entire, what, uh, the entire cast of the... P.S. Nerds slash what do we call ourselves these days? Uh, the Dirty Nerds. The Dirty Nerds. That's going to be our new name. Take a shower. So make sure you change that link on your website, I, please. I don't like that name. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, yeah. I don't like your SOCOM performance. That's what I'm saying. I don't like your face. So what do you guys think? Well, I, wa I wasn't very good in SOCOM, so <laughs> that makes sense. Awesome. What do you guys think about the Critical Strike podcast? It's awesome. I like it. I like yeah. that they have game challenges. I was telling uh, Nacero that we should adopt that, where we challenge each other to finish We should games. sue them you for know, infringement. Done first. <laughs> also mm. theft. I, I enjoy watching Nacero uh, go through games Stalker. that he doesn't like. You know, like, like Metroid. Metroid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I got a big kick out of that. Yeah. I thought it was pretty funny. Because I don't like Metroid either. The very first one when I was a kid, and that's it. Really? Yeah. Well, well, let me argue with you, like you're fucking Nacero. <laughs> what? What about fucking Metroid? Do you not like? Um, Boobs. Yeah, I think that's starting with the it. newest one with the Wii. I don't no. like. No, 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 oh, no. Jesus. We're not going there. I don't All like right. that one either. All right, we'll just back uh, in the back in the fucking day. Whoa! You, you fire up Metroid. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, Here's we'll start it off. Years. Like, I liked Metroid up until it was like, oh, I finally finished the game. And then she pulls up her helmet, and it's like, oh, you're a chick. Keep going. No, that's right. Press power. She said that to me. I'd keep going. Yeah, yeah that, it, it, it didn't say keep going, and also <laughs> you hate women. Right. I do hate women, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, mean, I like breasts, just not women. Nasero hates uh, Metroid, right? So. Yeah. Does he yeah. hate women, too? No. I love problem? women. So. Maybe, maybe, maybe he does. You know, oh, maybe you. that's where it all spawned at, Pete, is the, the purple haired traitor of the Metroid main character. Love Kyle. I don't you know what? I don't know. Bullshit. Hey, check it out. Nasero just responded on Twitter at Pete Dodd. He gave us the number. Uh, he's in for it now. Yeah, little does he know. <laughs> <laughs> How about this, Nasero? We're gonna re- we're gonna record a fucking podcast on, on your voicemail. voicemail. <laughs> All right, <laughs> and uh, yeah. Wow. I, I don't know where to go from that. I think they were yeah. a little drunk. Yeah, you know what, though? I don't know if you've listened to the PS Nerds. Nope. Or a.k.a. now, I guess, the Dirty Nerds. Um, that voicemail is probably the uh, most energetic. Really? Yeah, they are They are, uh, They are. are very monotone. Nah, I'm not a fan of that. So, uh, yeah, that was the most energetic you will ever hear, the Dirty Nerds. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm kidding, guys. Uh, thank you for the very long voicemail. <laughs> I actually appeared on their last episode. Did you? Because they were recording, and I decided, you know what, I'm going to fuck with them now. And while they were recording, I sent uh, Billy a message saying, uh, now I'm going to interrupt your podcast that isn't on my voicemail, bitch. And in response, they decided (laughs) to call me. (laughs) So I ended up on their podcast, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Talking and hanging out with the boys. They, They actually gave me a game challenge. Did they? They challenged me to play SOCOM with them. Eh, SOCOM. And I still haven't done it. <laughs> like the original SOCOM? No, the one on the PS3. Oh. Eh. You know, a system that you hate. Um, I don't hate, I just don't own it. No, you hate it. I don't hate it. You hate it. Admit it, Kyle. I don't. You're a fanboy, it's alright. You know, you accuse me a lot of being a fanboy. First, I was a Nintendo fanboy. Now no, I'm an no, Xbox no. fanboy. Yeah, let me pull now a I'm a Nintendo fanboy. No, no, Box no, 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 no. No, no, no. I actually accused Nick of being the Nintendo fanboy because no, he no, no, was. No, 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 no. You have accused me of being a Nintendo fanboy. I know. <sighs> I I accuse you of liking cock, but otherwise. Don't make me make Paul Nash go through the archives and listen to every single episode to prove my point, because I can do it. Go ahead. Because I'll pull the archives down. Paul Bitch, has what? them backed up to a hard drive. No! But nah. No, I'm sure I have in the past. But you were back then. That's all I had, really. Yeah, that's true. You were like our, our DS guy when you started. Actually. Yes, I was. So now we have another voicemail. Okay. From Mr. Rich, who was on that three-minute voicemail. He left us two voicemails. He left us two voicemails. It sounds like Rich is a little desperate for your attention, Josh. Uh, yeah, I think he is. I think he wants to be in you. Or you in him. I don't know how that works, but somewhere there's going to be a penis going to something. I'm going to play the voicemail now. <laughs> Hello, this is Rich. Um, I called uh, just a little bit ago with my podcast mates. A week ago. Um and I, I, I just wanted to apologize for that because it really was a well intentioned call and uh my friends like to drink alcohol. Mine does too. So you know, that's them, not me. But um also I'd like to kind of comment on my initial first call that I made where uh I told Kyle that I felt that he was kind of an angry uh, you know, kind of treating uh, uh I guess you're cheating Josh like an angry podcast wife is what I said. He does. But, uh, you know, your your anger and, and um, just violent anger, I guess, is the best way Violent to anger? In reaction. Just does nothing but prove my point, Kyle. Um, maybe you should seek some kind of help. You know, there's people that can help you. 
because you don't need to be that angry. Oh, shut up. All right, you guys have a good time, and uh, love the podcast. Thank you. This guy's an <laughs> asshole. I do not need help. Don't call him an asshole. Oh, too late. I already did. He's right in what he's saying, Kyle. I do not have an anger problem. I think you do. I th- nope. you know no, what? I don't. I even have a piece of evidence that can prove it. Oh? It's called the Kyle Can Can. Oh, Jesus. And it proves how much rage you have inside you. I am not all that angry. Sure, if you boil down every expletive and curse that I say, it seems like I... That's, you know, 90% of my conversational skills. <laughs> but it's not, really. There's there's a little more to that. I mean, there's 10% of me where I'm not yelling at you. Well, you know what? Before we, you. <laughs> before we go into your rage issues, Kyle. All right. There's one thing I wanted to touch upon from, from Rich's voicemail. Okay. Where he said his friends like to drink. Okay. And in response to that, I would like to say... Maybe you should get your co-hosts some help. If they have such a drinking problem, I think it's time to help them. First step in preventing a problem and, you know, making it go away is no, admitting because, you have a problem. No, no, no. Because, no. Rich, if you look at my co-host, Mr. Kyle Dumond, one, he has a drinking problem. I do not have a drinking problem. And two, he has a rage problem. I so. You, no, just shut nope, up, Josh. Kyle, let me just finish my statement. Up. If you, if you if you look back in history, Rich, Kyle was once a really nice young man, and uh, when he started drinking, that's when the rage started to come out. What? So if what? you cut off their their alcohol problem now, Rich, maybe you can prevent further Kyles from entering this world. Hey, whoa! First off, I've been drinking as long as you've known me. Secondly, fuck you. Last but not least, I don't have a drinking problem. See what I mean, Rich? See what I mean? God damn it, Josh. Why you gotta do this to me? Why you gotta make me hurt you? <laughs> so, <laughs> I think that's gonna wrap it up for this episode of Critical Strike. What, no top five? Oh, yeah, top five. <laughs> I don't know. I think we're stretching it. This is going to be like an hour and ten minutes as it is. No, nope, we're doing the top five. Oh, fuck. Now we're at the top five, Kyle. Yeah, the top five. We haven't done one of these in quite some time. Shit. It's got to be at least like ten episodes since we've done a top five. Probably. And uh, this one here, uh, we're getting to that point where the big gaming craze is going to hit. And you know what? Last episode I started up with saying there's no games that are coming out like this month or the next month that I'm excited for. I take that back. I'm a goddamn liar. Yeah, I have some games that I'm looking forward to that I didn't even realize that were coming out so quickly. Right, so we're going to do the top five games that we want for the rest of the year. And, uh, you know what? You kick it off, Kyle. All right. My top five games that are in no particular order. We're going to start it off, I guess, with number five, which is Kingdom Hearts 352 by two days... 358 by two days... Jesus Christ. Yes, I know. And you guys gave me shit for Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo HD Remix. Okay. That's like 50 characters longer than what I had to say. Mine's just four numbers. It's just, you know, 358 by 2. Numbers are scary. Yeah. So is your face. See what I mean, Rich? But, uh... Uh, When when is this game... Or... What system does this come out on? DS? uh, It's a DS game. Yeah. And it's a Kingdom Hearts game, so it's going to be Kingdom Hearts. It's going to be an RPG with a decent story with Disney characters. Also Square um, characters. Kingdom Hearts has always been pretty good, so... Yeah, I'm uh, I'm excited for it. I actually didn't even know that this was coming out. I I knew it was coming out. I didn't think it was going to be this year. 
I thought it was going to be next year. Yeah. I'm excited for it, but I wouldn't say it's in my top five. Well, I mean, there's not really all that many games that I was looking forward to. Like, this top five was... Uh, there's going to be so many games that I want that are coming out next year. It's, un- it's unbelievable. Yeah, next but, year's actually looking painful. Yeah. But uh, my number four, no surprise, Halo ODST. Boo! Whatever, I like Halo. And cock. And cock. So, uh, you know, this is an obvious logical choice. Comes out, what, two weeks from now? One week? I couldn't tell you. It's sometime in September, so... I know nothing about this game, except for the fact that I have no interest in it, and I'm not getting it. Yeah, I, I'll probably at least run it, give it a try. I mean, the, the Halo was the reason I got an Xbox. Halo 3 is the reason why I got a 360, so... But, I mean, you know, the appeal of the it. Halo series is the multiplayer. And there is nothing new in the multiplayer here. Nothing. So? So why not just play Halo 3 that has the same identical multiplayer? It's a story mode. I want to go through it. I want to know the different stories. Oh my god. Yeah. Number three, Dragon Age Origins. I have no idea what this game is. All I know that Bioware's (laughs) doing it, and it's an RPG. Possibly. So Bioware is doing it, huh? Yep, so uh, I'm in. I don't want it. (laughs) That's all I need is Bioware doing it. I hate Bioware. I imagine there's going to be some dragons, and it's going to talk about the story of dragons, their tale. Uh, That's all I got. Their tale of their age. Yep. So you want a game, you put a game that you know nothing about on your top five, Based on the fact that it's by Bioware. And the title has dragon in it. I think that's you got me a pretty on the solid. Yeah, you got me on the dragon part. I have faith. I have faith in Bioware. <sighs> Bioware hasn't let me down. Yet. Go on. Yet. This is, this is bullshit. Number two is uh, kind of an interesting thing. Silent Hill Shattered Memories, which I think is the PSP remake of the first game. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, yeah, I believe it is. I like the first Silent Hill. So the first Silent Hill was awesome. Yeah, I know. So you know, why not have a revamped version on my PSP? I'm in. Yeah, I agree. I'm I'm down for it. They actually um on this week's um PlayStation Store update, uh huh, they released the uh, original P- uh, PS1 version of uh, Silent Hill. Ooh, did they clean it up at all? Uh, no, because it's the original oh, version. It's, it's the PlayStation One version. Oh man, it's a PlayStation One original. Hell. Well, no, I mean, because Final Fantasy VII was released like that too. Like they released PlayStation One games on the store. It looks yeah. good. All right, I'll, uh, I'll take your word for it. I think it's only like five bucks too. Oh wow, that's that's pretty good. Yeah, uh, but I'm definitely down for the uh, PSP remake. Yeah, me too. And just like uh, I'm, I'm, go on. I'm down for uh, the Persona remake that they're coming out with. Uh, I I saw that I. I was hesitant. I think I might play that. I'm not sure. Because the last thing I need is some sort of soul-sucking RPG <laughs> to compete with my time with WoW. Right. And Final Fantasy VI. Uh, anyway, and uh, my final one is another no surprise, Legend of Zelda Spirit Tracks. I'm surprised. Why? I don't know. I'm. This game just does nothing for me. It's a Zelda game. You have to play it. No, I don't. Yes, you and do. I have no intentions of doing so. Uh, I mean, I like the the two DS, the one DS game. I don't remember what the hell it was called. The Phantom, Phantom, Hourglass. Phantom Hourglass. I liked. So, you know, let's see what they do with it. I despise the Phantom Hourglass. I enjoyed it. It was just, uh, going back to that one dungeon every yeah. fucking. Five seconds. That was, was a fucking pain shit. in the ass. That I will agree with. I I hated that. Yeah, I I don't know. It's uh, I have interest in this one, but I think Phantom Hourglass kind of sucked my love out of, out of anything I had for Zelda. No way that the Phantom Hourglass could have ruined Zelda Two Electric Boogaloo for you. It did. I think between uh, Twilight Princess and Phantom Hourglass, I now hate The Legend of Zelda. No, Josh. Why? 
Wow. I'm just saying. I, I, I don't know. Those two games were not good. Twilight, Twilight Princess was okay. No. It could have been a little shorter. I, you know what? I think if I played the uh, GameCube version, I would have liked it better. That's what I've been hearing, that it was better, even though it's the same game. Yeah, but it didn't have the, at the time, tacked on Wii controls. Yeah. So you done? Uh, uh those were my five, <laughs> yeah. All right. What are your five? I'll, I will kick it off with number five, Ratchet and Clank, A Crack in Time. That's an interesting uh, choice. Well, <laughs> uh, they always have a, a clever name for the Ratchet and Clank games. Like, uh, you had uh, Ratchet and Clank, A Quest for Booty. Yeah, booty. So yeah, I mean, I loved uh, uh, Ratchet and Clank: Future Tools of Destruction, and uh, I'm really looking forward to this one. Uh, I actually used to hate the Ratchet and Clank series up until Keith made me play it. So, uh, so yeah, you hated I, a game that you've never played before. How yeah, it unlike you? Yeah. <laughs> don't judge me. I don't. I don't need your judgment, Kyle. Well, too late, because you've been judged. Damn it. Uh, number two, or sorry, number four, <laughs> will be uh, Modern Warfare 2. Okay. Loved the first one, Call of Duty 4. Now I want the second one. So what is this? Is this, this going to be Call of Duty 4 Part 2? Well, what, what it was, uh, Call of Duty 4 was actually titled Modern Call of Duty Warfare. 4 Modern, Warf- Modern Warfare. Okay. And uh, n- now they're separating... Um, the modern part from the Call of Duty series, which uh, was I always see. based on like World War Two and yeah. stuff. So this is going to be like a, a new franchise, okay? In a way, and uh, yeah, it, it should be really good. I loved the first one. I played the shit out of it. I just played the multiplayer a few times. It was it was fun. Any chance of you getting this? Uh, I'll probably pick up the first one for like ten bucks. Since I'll be in Connecticut, my cousin's going to be harassing me to play it, so I'll probably pick it up. Nice. Uh, the third one on my list would be Assassin's Creed 2. That's a surprise. I thought you hated the first one. No, I loved the first one, with the exception of how repetitive it got over time. Okay. Uh, the first they like they, they started out really strong in the first one, and uh, I would say about five or seven hours into it, they lost all their steam. And it was just travel to this place and do this thing and travel to this place and do that thing. It was really nothing new. This one on is this one, uh, medieval times, right? Uh, I, I guess so, yeah. Like, it, it's around, like, Leon, uh, Da Vinci's time. Oh, okay. Yeah, the Renaissance. Yeah. And uh, it looks really, really good. It looks really promising, some of the stuff that they have in it. Uh, I kept up with it quite a bit before we stopped reading gaming news. Did you? And, uh, yeah, I really want it. Let's, uh, let's see if the gaming news will color your perspective or not, since you've gone dark. Oh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Another one I kept up with uh, quite a bit before we stopped reading gaming news would be my number two, Uncharted 2. Electric Boogaloo. Uh, <laughs> I love the first Uncharted. <laughs> <laughs> Fucker. Um, no, Uncharted was really, like, Naughty Dog's big PlayStation 2 adventure game like PlayStation because they used 3. to do yeah PlayStation 3 <laughs> cuz on the PlayStation 2 they did Jack and Dexter uh, but now they're doing Uncharted and uh, it's really really cool um, you can climb on anything fucking destroy anything it's it's a really cool adventure game i'm really looking forward to it i actually had a, a code for the beta <clears throat> i actually had like four codes for the beta and i just gave them all away why did you do that I don't know, I just didn't really want to play it. I don't know. I love how you get like 50 beta codes just because of all the stuff you're subscribed to. Yeah, uh, that's true. <laughs> I think I have like three more mag ones coming. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, my number one would be <clears throat> I- iPad. 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 Like the weird monkey dog thing? Yep. That's kind of just a tech demo on motion. It is more than a tech demo, Kyle. Look, uh, you know what? I will say this right now. It looks fantastic. The interaction stuff is cool. I just think it's stupid. Now, when I gave you my top five list, 
and you said I pet. We will talk about this. Yes, we will. So, what do you got? All right. I don't. I can't. Even if I had a PS3, even if I had the fuck, it, if the the eye toy, whatever it's called, the eye spy, the Sony eye, eye the eye of eye Sony, toy. eye toy, eye toy, the uh, it just seems so stupid. This is a game that you buy, right? Like it comes on a disc. Yeah. Yeah. It seems dumb to me that to buy a disc and insert it into this to play with this pet, I think it's a dumb idea. If they were going to go with the iPad route, it should have been something that kind of runs in the background of your PS3. Like when you're in the dashboard, it'll come up and be like, hey, play with me, not load this game and play with me. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, it just seems stupid that it's a game just entirely devoted to it. It, it it'd be better off just being something that kind of just happens. I think you're holding back what you really want to say. Ye no, that's pretty much it. Because you were basically iPad. Seriously, are you fucking kidding me? Well, yeah. I mean, I already pretty much blew my wad on you when you first told me. You berated me. You're right, I did. For wanting this game. It's It's iPad. adorable, Kyle. Yeah, it, it is cute. I mean, it looks good. It's cute. I just I don't see why things. a 50-some-odd Yeti would want to buy it. <laughs> F wait, 50? I don't know. I don't know 50? how you age. 50? Yeah, 50. Uh. Well, you know, I always increase your age every time I bring it up, so... Like the last time you, you were forty something. You saw me in a video. I didn't look fifty. Whatever you, I don't know. You ate. You age slowly. <laughs> so then it would be like twelve. Twenty, twenty-five, probably. But no, you berated me for one. You're right, this game. I did. If uh, I was on my work computer, so I don't have the conversation saved, so I can't bring up the. What are you fucking stupid? Let me. I, I. I don't know. I can't explain it. I really want this. It looks adorable. I like the idea of being able to draw things out. Yeah, that's and it'll cool. redraw it and interact with it. And I don't know. Like, I. Th I guarantee you, I will spend countless hours with this, just fucking around. Uh, I bet you you're gonna spend ninety percent of your time drawing penises for it to play with. <laughs> I no. See, I'm not that type of person. No. No, because I had Little Big Planet. I could have done that. I didn't. How is Little Big Planet? Have you even touched that? Oh yeah, I love that game. Oh, and just you never really bring it up anymore. Well, I talk about it on a podcast all the time. I bring it up again. All right, but uh, no, I'm not the only one who wants the iPad. Like Mick is crazy for it too. Well, Mick has kids, so it makes sense. Ah, see, here's the catch. I have a goddaughter, Kyle. But that's not your child. It's your but she comes child. up here a lot, and I can play with her with it. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I guess that works. I guarantee you, she would love this. And I guarantee you, I would love it. Of course, she would love it. It's I'm a kid. It'd be fantastic for chid, get for chids, ch children. <laughs> nice. I don't know. I don't see your hatred for it. I think if you had a PlayStation Three, you would get it too. No, I, I'd probably make a point of not getting it. I would buy it for you. Uh, God damn it. You know what? If you ever get a PlayStation 3, so help me God, this is now fucking documented because it's on the podcast. I am buying you iPad. God damn it. I can't even refuse. Nope. I can't fucking it, send it back because of my goddamn good manners. It is documented now. I hate you, Josh. You've just put the nail in the coffin on why I will never get a PS3. <laughs> so, so I uh, don't have to get iPad. Now I'm going to buy you a PS3. Oh, fuck you. And iPad. Oh, come on. Nope, done. No. Yep. No. Done. No. So there we go. <laughs> so there we go with our top five. Yep. It's been a long, long time since yes, we've done it has. one. Yes, it has. Felt good to get that out. It did. Uh, I don't know if we're going to be doing it as often as we used to, but every once in a while it's kind of nice to bring back. 
little echo from the past. Yeah. So, uh, Kyle, how can uh, people get in contact with us if they so choose to? Well, there's a few ways, actually. You can call us on our voicemail, which is 1909-C-STRIKE. You know, leave us a voicemail. We'll play it on the show. We'll talk about you. Call you, uh, call you an asshole, you know? That's how it works. No, you'll call them an asshole. I won't. Well, we'll see. You can also contact us via email at cstrikepodcast at gmail.com. Or uh, you can talk to us on Twitter. I'm K.R. Dumond and Josh is Nazaro. So, you know, follow us. Do whatever. And, uh, and uh, we hope to yeah. hear from you. Also, yeah. iTunes reviews, always a good thing. iTunes reviews, yes. Leave us iTunes reviews. We love them. We do. It makes Kyle happy. I know. If I could print them out and roll them and roll around on them, I would. I bet you he actually would. <laughs> I probably while, would. He would roll around with them while yelling, "He hates iPad," and rubbing them up up and down my body, going, "Yes, iTunes reviews. I feel so <laughs> warm inside." Nice. I would do that. And uh, I would videotape that. So leave us iTunes reviews. Yes, yeah, the more the, the more you do it, the more I get to roll around with paper. You know, I think we should set a limit. If we get forty iTunes reviews, yeah, you'll roll around on them. All right, I'll do it. So for forty iTunes reviews, Kyle will roll around naked with whoa, all the whoa, iTunes whoa, reviews whoa, printed whoa. out. Whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> what did you say? I said if we get forty iTunes reviews. Kyle will roll around with all the all the reviews printed out. Yeah, it's not what you said the first time. Yeah, it was. I, I will be at least partially clothed because I there have been so, too Kyle. many anonymous people who have seen my penis, and I would quite hope frankly, that y- that's uh, that number is a little too high for me. I would hope that you would be partially clothed, Kyle. What are you talking about? Yeah, yeah, we'll see. God, but yeah, disgusting. forty reviews. I will. I will print out. All of those reviews, and I will roll around with them. Naked. Not naked. Naked. Jesh, uh, yeah, Jesh. Josh, why do you want to see me naked? <laughs> I don't, but they do. God damn it. Not the Megas. Maybe. What do you mean, maybe? Maybe. Do you have a naked picture of the Megas? No. <laughs> uh... And, by the way, we actually had a contest a few episodes ago about the uh, Mag Beta Code. Okay. And uh, Who won? it was for the fifth person to email us, guess the code, and uh, it went out to Bill Haberman. Uh, <laughs> 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 oh, oh, Thrill House. Sorry. Well, Thrill House did get one. He did get one. You, you gave him a pity one. Yeah, I had two. And uh, I sent out the contest one. To Bill Haberman, and then I gave Thrill House my other one. Yeah, because Thrill House was going a little crazy there. Yeah, he was begging. I don't think he's played it since. How many emails did he send you? Like, 10? Oh, my God. I think he to my main account, he sent like 10. And I think to the podcast account, he sent like 10. So, yeah. Jesus. And that is going to wrap it up for uh, Critical Strike 43. A.K.A. our Thank longest you. podcast ever. Yeah, I think it was, but you know what? That's what you get for sleeping in on me, Kyle. I'm sorry. I feel like such an asshole. As you should. As I should. So, remember, leave us iTunes reviews, contact us, whatever, and uh, we are out of here. All right, people. Good night and good luck. Have a good time. Later. Murder, murder you. Murder you. Murder you. I hate, I hate, I hate, I hate, I hate you. I hate you. I hate you. I hate you. Murder, murder, murder you. I will fucking end you. I will murder, murder you. I hate, I hate you. I will murder you. I hate, I hate, I hate you. Murder, murder, murder you. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Murder, murder, murder you. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Murder, murder, murder you. I will, I will, I will murder you. I will, I will, I will murder you.
fucking hate you. Fucking fucking hate 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 you. Fucking murder you. I hate you. Fucking murder you. Fucking I hate stupid you. I will fucking end you. Murder you. Murder you. I hate stupid you. Fucking hate hate you. Fucking fucking I hate hate you. Murder you. I will fucking end you. I will fucking end you. Fucking end you. Murder, murder you. I hate, I hate, I hate, I hate, I hate, I hate you. I hate you. I hate you. I hate you. Murder, murder, murder you. I will fucking end you. I will murder, murder. I hate, I hate you. I hate, I hate you. I will murder you. I hate, I hate, I hate you. Murder, murder, murder you. Stupid, stupid. Murder, murder, murder you. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Murder, murder, murder you. I will murder. I will fucking end you. I will murder. I will fucking end you. I hate. I hate. I hate you. 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 I hate. I hate. I hate. I hate you. 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 I hate. I will fucking end you. I will fucking end you. I hate. I hate. I hate you. Murder. You. Stupid. You call me a faggot. To the east side. To a deluxe apartment in the sky.